and it's the first Lakers draft of the J.J. Redick era. It starts tonight. They're slated to have the 17th overall pick. Yesterday on first take, Shannon Sharp laid out his expectations extremely clearly for Redick's first season in L.A. And for Shea Sharp, it's championship or bust. What do you mean what the expectations are? You know what the expectations are. You know what you signed up for. Man, you signed to win a championship. The Laker fan base, a Laker nation, they expect nothing less. It doesn't matter who the players are. All they see is purple and gold. And when you wear the purple and gold, you coach the purple and gold, the expectations are through the roof. You got two All-NBA players, and so the expectations are is championship. Wendy, do you agree with Shannon that it has to be a championship or this season's a waste for the Lakers? I do not. I understand with LeBron's age that that's the way people are going to default to. But the most interesting thing to me that came out of the press conference was what Rob Palenka said about their willingness to trade their three first-round available picks starting today. He backed way off his willingness to use those picks in a major trade. This is the opposite of what he was saying at the trade deadline. When they didn't do a deal at the trade deadline, he basically said it's better for us to wait to the summer, to June and July, to see if we could use those picks in a major deal. He, you know, on the contrary, said the Lakers need to lean in to modernizing their franchise, to drafting players, to developing them, to, to developing the players that they have on their roster, basically to rely on uh, J.J. Reddick's newer style of coaching with some, some, some adjustments. I'm not sure they're going to make any significant move. One of the big things that they have at their plate is what happens with D'Angelo Russell, and Russell has that control whether he opts into his contract or not. So I think the Lakers really at that press conference sending the message, they were looking at the long term and we're going to make the most of what they had, but we're certainly we're not sounding like championship or bust. CJ, will J.J. Reddick success be judged by whether or not he wins a championship in L.A.? I think to the casual fan and the unrealistic Lakers expectations that come with being there from their fans, I think in their minds it will be, but I'm more so looking at X's and O's. I'm looking at the type of assistance he surrounds himself with. Does he hold Braun accountable? Does he hold AD accountable? How does he take losses? How does he respond uh, when he's in crucial situations and has to draw up ATOs? What types of ATOs is he drawing up? What types of rotation changes is he making as the season progresses? What are his game to game changes, especially as they get closer and closer to the playoffs? I think you're judging him based on that. The wins and losses are going to be very difficult to come by in a tough Western Conference. Uh, I think it's, it's been on record saying that a lot of times the coach gets too much blame uh, for wins and losses. It's, it's up to the players to perform at a high level. And to be quite frank, the West is deep. And I think the Lakers have only avoided the playing game once in the last, what, three to five years. They've, they've struggled to be a top five seed in the last decade. Monica, what do you think? Well, I, I think. All right, we're losing, we're losing Monica a little bit. Once we get her back, we'll, we'll get her thoughts. Bobby, what moves can the Lakers make right now to become contenders? Yeah, I, I think certainly Brian alluded to the D'Angelo Russell $19 million player option. That's, you know, by June 29th here. I, I think, Ryan, when you look at it, if I was Rob Palinka in the Lakers front office, I would go to LeBron James and I would say, would you take a discount to come back? Would you come back at a $38 million contract instead of a $50 million contract? And that would allow us to use our $12.9 million non-tax mid-level exception here. And here are the four or five players that we can go about doing that. And then that also opens up the flexibility for them to go out and make a trade here. So I think the Russell decision plays a big role. I think what the James contract plays a big role because both players back, they have limited flexibility as far as how they go about adding to their roster. Monica, somebody knew you was about to spit some hot fire, so they put you on mute. What are your <laughs> thoughts about the Lakers this year? Uh, so, CJ, wise, wisdom, but Ankh represents the problem, right? Like, this is not a championship team. Yes, the standard of yesteryear is what it is, and I don't want to call all of Lakers fan nation delusional because my producer tonight for the draft, Robert Ringer, is a very rational guy, and we sat and talked about this a little bit yesterday. It is about demonstrating growth, and as important as LeBron James is, Anthony Davis, we've all said it, is the centerpiece. Austin Reeves, um, Rui Hachimura, like Jared Vanderbilt, if he can get healthy, what does it look like to develop the pieces around them? Because the LeBron James window is closing. We all know that. 
And so in no way do I think that this standard should be a championship or bus run this year. Last week, UD said playoffs, which I was kind of like, playoffs? But in the same breath, that might be legit. Can they be a legitimate playoff team and get out of the play, get out of the play in considering how deep the West is? Well, Monica, when you look at this team, they have a lot to build, but they can start tonight in the draft. And the 78th annual NBA draft is now a two-day event with the first round tonight at ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. And the second round tomorrow afternoon at 4 Eastern on ESPN. The Atlanta Hawks will have the first pick. To the W now and the Commissioner's Cup as the New York Liberty are trying to defend their cup against, oh no, you know when they play that, it's time to get out. And reigning MVP, Brianna Stewart goes to the hole, finish and one. Here you're gonna see Brianna Stewart again from downtown, bang. Right now in the Lynx, have to find a The Minnesota Lynx find a way to win. Nafisa Collier, 21 points, six rebounds, and she's the Commissioner Cup MVP. Now, Monica, when you look at this game and you have the New York Liberty, who are the reigning champs, playing extremely well, what is your takeaway from the Minnesota Lynx going in there and getting a win? I keep trying to tell y'all we need to be talking about the Minnesota Be paying attention to the Minnesota Lynx. <laughs> what do you know, Monica? The league is more than Caitlin Clark. <laughs> and thank God, we have, <laughs> thank God we have you here to let us know. <laughs> hey, guys, coming back, our top story. It's an NBA stunt.